Taking off. The screwball incident was a uh, brush fire in the city of Los Angeles. It's very rough terrain there. It's very steep. And uh, how we use the drones in that particular situation was to locate uh, hot spots at that fire. So imagine a brush fire where that fire goes through that area, okay? And all that brush gets burnt, those trees get burnt. Well, when all that smoke and fire is done, it's very difficult to see whether there's things burning under the surface. Just like that fire you may have had when you were a kid or whenever, those red embers hide under that surface and you can't see them. Well, what the thermal camera on these drones allows us to do is pan that area and see those hot spots, allowing us to send firefighters out there to put out those hot spots before the wind picks up. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it up to uh, just about 10 feet. And before I actually go through any of these activities, I'm just gonna go to the right, go to the left, Come back, come forward. So basically I went through all of my movements that I'm gonna be doing and I'm just checking ahead of time to make sure that it does that. My name is Jared Webster and I am a fire inspector one at Coupa. We come up here every Wednesday and we do training to keep up on our skills and maintain our proficiency. At this point, uh, situational awareness, uh, brush fires, the thermography enabled to see those, uh, those hot spots, uh, search, and, uh, search and rescue uh, for missing people, things like that, um, hazardous materials and being able to send meters into those in environments, and also like uh, with COVID and being able to do like looking at a plot of land and being able to see what's going on with that, such as like brush and things like that. So now we could go out, we could uh, look at that brush and see whether it's been cut, if it's hazardous. My name is Steven Hamilton. My rank is Inspector 2 with the Los Angeles City Fire Department. I'm currently I'm the trainer on the department, so I help train with uh, Inspector Art Rodriguez. And uh, my involvement in the program is specifically to do with hazardous materials. Uh, my name is Diana Nguyen. I'm a civilian industrial hygienist with the uh, LA City Fire Department. My specialty is in occupational health and safety and chemical safety. Uh, I work with uh, our COOPA division, which is Certified Unified Program Agency. Uh, we do um, enforcement and regulation of businesses in the city of Los Angeles that store and use hazardous materials. Uh, I wanted to join the drone team because of the potential for you know, use of drones within hazmat response. It also helps us better protect our responders. Uh, so rather than sending a person into uh, the scene, we can first send a drone in. Uh, we have the capabilities of putting meters on our drones so that we can get uh, readings, uh, radiological readings or uh, gas and vapor readings, so that gives us a better idea of c the kind of threat that we're dealing with. There's different drones for different things. Some of the some of the drones we'll use just for training. Other drones we'll use for more advanced operations, I guess you would say. Uh, this particular drone, for example, is a DJI uh, Matrice 210, we call it, right? This is a much bigger drone, um, and it weighs a lot more, as you can see. Is we have a camera. It has uh, zoom on it, 180 times zoom. We're talking 30 optical and the rest are digital. But that allows us, uh, example like in a hazardous materials incident or an incident where you couldn't get close, you could zoom in and really see the detail. It has a very sophisticated thermal camera on it. You can see here, this thermal camera here is very sensitive. So this thermal camera will allow us to see the details after a brush fire. Certain drones like this are, you know, it could be upwards of 20 plus thousand dollars. Um, and then drones like this could also carry uh, hazardous materials meters. And we do all our own like 3D printing here and everything else. Um, but it allows us to put meters on the drones um, to send that information back. My name is Arthur Rodriguez and I'm a Fire One inspector. Limiting factors on, on drones in general is going to be a battery. Um, these are all uh, lithium polymer batteries, so this particular drone, uh, depending on the environmental conditions it's flown in, can fly anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, um, depending on how aggressive the pilot flies as well, that has a lot to do with it. The size is also the limiting factor, so while it may be uh, beneficial because of the portability, um, it's not going to have uh, much more of a payload lift than the proprietary camera that it carries. Matrice 210, which you saw earlier, 
larger platform, uh, bigger batteries, uh, larger payload. So much more of a wide utilization in respect to the size of the platform. The range line of sight on these is actually quite far, up to four miles. Um, obviously we don't fly them that far. Uh, we don't typically fly these platforms beyond visual line of sight, but the capability is there with the technology to uh, fly that far. You're gonna see we're gonna be uh, going up in altitude, we're gonna be coming down, we're gonna be uh, rotating around this uh, course. There's targets inside each bucket, and the goal is to catch those targets uh, completely when we're uh, operating the drone at a certain altitude. So what that's teaching us to do is if we ever get an incident and we have to send a drone, we're gonna be, it's gonna be like, you know, a natural instinct to, you know, maneuver around it safely, correct? Uh, and, uh, and capture numbers, maybe the type of uh, spill. We have a bigger drone with all the sensors and stuff, meters that we're gonna fly in. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So basically the, the smaller drones are for us to practice uh, for now. The public sees a drone 200 feet up in the air, they have no idea where that camera is pointing. So there are, you know, people tend to assume that we're up to no good, but we're actually there to benefit the public. Our footprint at Dodger Stadium for COVID Division was massive. You know, being able to bring vehicles in there at an efficient throughput, you know, get these civilians vaccinated and then out was a unique challenge in itself. So being able to create in a map of that entire area that we we're going to utilize for vaccination, being able to place resources on that map and then decide, okay, well, if we have our vehicles come in in this gate, you know, where are we going to load these vehicles up at? Where are we going to place our areas where we're going to vaccinate? Because we had three of them up there, three different divisions where we sent vehicles through vaccination. It was a unique challenge, but being able to provide that real-time aerial perspective of what that map is going to look like and, and where these resources should be placed was beneficial. I think we're probably 25, 30 drones on the department, but there is it. A lot of them are just for training. They've been aged, there's been problems with them, so we'll just use them in situations like here. Department our size needs four or five times that amount of drones at minimum. And the reason that is, is because you can't take a drone from downtown, for example, and get it to the valley in an emergency like that, right? It takes a long time to get there. So you really need these things out there where they're going to be used at that given time. Well, instead of sending a firefighter, we have the ability, and we're moving towards that ability to send that machine. So now we have a machine to do it instead of a person. And the same thing has to do with saving uh, civilians. It could directly relate to that hazardous material too, because now we know what we're dealing with quicker, right? And now we could evacuate the area and things like that. Imagine the brush inspection scenario where you're going out and you're looking to see who's done their brush clearance uh, in the city and maybe who hasn't or what the dangerous uh, areas are. Now you're able to find those areas and correct those problems before it becomes an issue.